Welcome to the broadcast. My name is Grace Korea. Now, the federal government of Somalia has cut diplomatic ties with neighboring Kenya. It has recalled all its diplomats from Nairobi and given Kenyan diplomats in Mogadishu seven days to leave the country. The announcement was made by the Minister of Information, Osman Abukar Dube, on state media. The communication read in part, and I quote, that the Somalia government, based on its national sovereignty guaranteed by international law and order and fulfilling its constitutional duty to safeguard the nationhood, unity and stability of the country, has decided to sever diplomatic relations with the Kenyan government. The decision comes after Somalia submitted a letter of protest against Kenya to Sudanese Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok, who is also chair of the regional bloc intergovernmental authority on development that is eager. Somalia recently accused Kenya of meddling in its internal affairs. <laughs> Right, and in a swift reaction, Kenya chose to downplay the differences, saying there are more commonalities between the two countries. Government spokesman, retired Colonel Cyrus Aguna, said a committee had been set up to ensure relations between Kenya and Somalia are normalized. And all of us are aware that uh, Kenya and Somalia have got, uh, you know, uh, a lot of similarity and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, factors that are, uh, bring us close together. We have got a uh, uh, historical background that link us together. We've got uh, economic ties that also put link us together, even socially. And you're also aware that uh, we have got KDF that is in Somalia currently uh, helping with the, uh, uh, the search for peace. Uh, in that country. And therefore there's a lot going on or going on for us between I mean, ourselves as Kenyan and, and, and uh, uh, Somalia. But also do recall, remember, that uh, the issues to do with uh, uh, diplomacy and uh, international relations also works on the principle of, uh, you know, um, quid pro quo, right? You scratch my back, I scratch your back. And as a country, we've been very, very, you know, kind and accommodative because you remember that even in the dub, we have got uh, Hagadera, IFO uh, camps, uh, that currently house over 200,000, uh, you know, in people from, you know, a neighboring country. And, and therefore, we've got a lot of commonality between the, the two, uh, between these two countries. And therefore, anything that would be able to undermine that, of course, it's something that, uh, you know, um, effort must be put in place to ensure that uh, it is resolved. And as of now, certainly there are, you know, discussions, you know, taking place or going on to ensure that uh, the relationships are norm normalized for normal socioeconomic, you know, activities uh, to be able to uh, continue as they were before. So there is a committee that has been put in place to be able to look at those issues that are, you know, uh, coming in between these two neighboring countries that have got a lot of, you know, um, history. Between, of, between the two of them to be, to be addressed. So yes, there's a committee that is working on it, and as soon as uh, uh, all issues are normalized, then you'll be able to be notified. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Uh, my name now, these developments came as President Uru Kenyatta hosted the Somaliland counterpart Bihi Abdi amidst worsening relations with Somalia. The visit by the leader of the self-declared country seeks to give Kenya a platform through which Nairobi can have presence in Hajosa as it has no diplomatic presence in Somaliland. President Abdi jetted into the country for a three-day state visit on Sunday and was received by Agriculture CS Peter Munya and Foreign Affairs Chief Administrative Secretary Ababu Namomba now, my colleague Michelle Ngele had been scheduled to speak with the visiting president. Unfortunately, the interview was cancelled just moments ago, and she now joins me live here in studio. Michelle, good afternoon. Great to have you. What happened? Well, Grace, we were at a Nairobi Hotel ready for that interview with the Somali president, uh, Musa Bihi, there. Unfortunately, about an hour ago, we had a representative of Somaliland's diplomatic mission here in Kenya tell us that that interview had been cancelled pending further consultations. And so um, we had to retreat back to square one there, wondering why the interview had been cancelled. No further information there coming from the representative of, of Somaliland's diplomatic mission there. Uh, but uh, President uh, Musa Bihi 
was here for his first visit since taking over in 2017 as the leader of the self-declared autonomous state of Somaliland. His visit to Kenya for the worsening the diplomatic st uh, state between Kenya and Somalia. We had him first come to Kenya on the 3rd of December. Um, that was on Sunday. The Somali's Ministry of, uh, of Foreign Affairs taking that to Twitter saying that uh, Somaliland was a federal state of Somalia and had no capacity to deal directly with Kenya, especially after Somalia had severed ties with Kenya. Now, this, of course, following a long-standing diplomatic spat about uh, two weeks ago, uh, Somalia suspending Kenya's visa on arrival for Kenyans in Somalia, uh, following accusations of uh, Nairobi meddling in Somalia's uh, scheduled elections coming uh, in February 2021, specifically touching on the leader of uh, Jubaland, popularly known as Sheikh Madobe, uh, Mogadishu accusing Nairobi there of um, uh, interfering and, and putting pressure on Sheikh Madobe to go back on a uh, poll agreement that was brokered about uh, two months ago. But of course, uh, even as uh, Mogadishu at about 1.30 a.m. Mogadishu time uh, took to state media to officially sever ties with Nairobi, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta and his uh, Somaliland counterpart, uh, Musebi, he had met on Monday, agreeing on several uh, issues of mutual cooperation that visit uh, giving Nairobi an opportunity to have a diplomatic presence in Somaliland in the capital Hargeisa there uh, where Kenya does not have diplomatic presence and of course even as uh, Somaliland uh, uh, tries to champion for international recognition as a sovereign state uh, Kenya uh, does recognize its efforts in economic um, stability in having a relative peace in a sea of chaos that is Somalia 29 years now since Somalia uh, broke away from um, uh, uh, since Somaliland rather broke away from Somalia during the rule of Siad Barre there in, in 1991, they are still championing for international recognition. However, Somali, Somalia uh, feels that the recognition of Somaliland as an autonomous, as an autonomous state um, in, in, in a way deals a blow to the independence and sovereignty of Somalia even as the international community tries to champion for a stable government there in Mogadishu. So as it stands, Grace, uh, not much is known really about the military cooperation between Somalia and Kenya, with Kenya sending troops, the KDF troops, under the um, African uh, Union mission in Somalia. It remains what will happen also to 350,000 Somalians living in Kenya, mainly in camps in Dadaab and Kakuma. Although under international humanitarian law, Kenya does have the obligation to protect residents, um, the, the refugees in Dadaab, as well as the properties of each of the host countries in the respective countries. All right, Michelle, thank you so much for that, our very own Michelle Ngela there. But now we need to take you to Nyeri County, where Kanu Chairman and Baringo Senator Gideon Moy is continuing with his BBS sensitization while drumming up support for constitutional amendments that have continued to elicit mixed reactions across the political divide. Let's cross over live 